At Northwestern's Feinberg School of Medicine, a unique project called New Gene is helping advance genetic knowledge. One of only a few academic gene banks in the U.S., the project helps researchers and doctors better understand the role genetics plays in diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and heart disorders. Since 2002, volunteers like Anna Lampian have been donating DNA samples to Northwestern University's New Gene Project. One, two, three. You okay? I'm good. I heard about this project because I work at Northwestern, um, and a lot of people were talking about the research that was being done. Um, I work in a genetic research facility, so I hear about a lot of the breakthroughs that are going on and a lot of the um, hopes and aspirations for the researchers. And when I heard about this project where they were collecting a data um, sample from different people, I wanted to contribute to that because any way that we can help move medicine forward and help with the genetic research, I feel, is going to benefit the human race in the long run. New Gene is a biobank. It's a place where we collect samples that are donated by participants in the New Gene Project. And um, we, we, it consists of really three parts. It consists of a sample of DNA that they voluntarily give us. It consists of a questionnaire where they fill out some information that tells us about their health status. And then the final piece that it has in it is information that's mined from their electronic health records. What we really want to be able to do is use that information to help predict what diseases you might get, to identify whether or not a particular drug might work in you, um, and to think about how we can better treat people based on a better understanding of what the genetic basis of their disease is. Currently, there are 7,500 volunteers participating in New Gene. Wendy Wolf, director of the project, hopes to raise that number to 10,000 by the end of 2008. When we launched the project back in 2002, it was a, a fairly uncommon uh, project. It's becoming more commonplace. I think a lot of institutions and researchers are recognizing the value for this type of research in enabling genetic research to move forward towards improving patient care. Participation in the project is very easy. It takes you know, 20 to 30 minutes tops. You come into the hospital, you can make an appointment with a research coordinator. They'll sit down and talk to you about the project. You'll fill out an informed consent form explaining what participation in the study entails, which is essentially a single blood draw and agreeing to grant um, the project team access to the medical record information. Um, from your care at the hospital. And that's essentially it. Once the blood is drawn, it's taken to a central processing lab where the volunteer's DNA is extracted, providing a wealth of information. Dr. Nadra Jafari is the director of the core facility. We play a very important role in that project. Our role is to make sure that the DNA is extracted in, in a correct way, in a timely manner, at a high quality, and reliable for investigators to use. To ensure the confidentiality of participants is maintained during the process, New Gene uses barcodes to identify volunteers' medical information in DNA samples. No names, social security numbers, or birth dates are used. What the researchers gain access to is a numeric ID for their DNA sample and the corresponding numeric ID with all the data, the medical data associated with that sample. And that's all people can gain access to as part of making use of the resource. We have policies that uh, we will not grant access um, to samples or data by insurance companies or um, other organizations that we feel might be concerning to our participants. In the end, after extracting DNA, this is our end result here. And this small volume can help hundreds of researchers with their projects and their experiments. The DNA is then stored in freezers and ready for researchers to use. For Margaret Urbanic, assistant professor at the Feinberg School of Medicine, the DNA and medical information made available by NuGene for patients that have diseases and those that don't is both helpful and cost-effective for her research.
Nutrient helps us in multiple ways. On the most basic level, it helps us by providing controls or unaffected people for our genetic studies. In the past, we used to have to recruit those ourselves, and that would add to the length and the cost of the study. Now, we can just ask for these samples, and they're available. We can share them among multiple investigators, so there's less duplicated effort both at recruiting the samples, and also, since we're often using the same way of measuring genetic information, that information can be shared among um, individuals using specific subjects as controls, so we don't have to duplicate that, and that can save us thousands of dollars. So far, NuGene has been used to support studies that will help research in areas such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and diseases of the nervous system. Project Director Wendy Wolf is optimistic that based on NuGene's contributions to genetic research, the project will continue to grow. We're hoping in the next couple years it will you know, double in size and become even more useful for the scientific community. I think our ultimate goal and why we're all working so hard in this area is really to see the advances from basic genetic research improve human health. Dr. Rex Chisholm believes that's already happening. With the valuable genetic information provided by projects like NuGene, the way medicine is practiced is starting to change. It's not fantasy. There is an FDA-approved uh, kit called Mammaprint, which actually uses 70 different genetic markers to predict whether or not a breast cancer is likely to be recurrent or not. So already today, this kind of information is changing healthcare, and I think this is just the tip of the iceberg.